What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to the world according to Briggs. I am Briggs. I live in the Portland, Oregon metro area, and I want to tell you about this place. Three years ago, I did a video about the top 10 reasons not to move to Portland, Oregon. Honestly, that video helped launch this channel. In those three years, things in Portland have changed. Not the stereotypical things like the rain, cloudy skies, beer, and strip clubs. Those will be here forever, and they won't be in this video. You already know about them, probably. Today, we're going to be looking at the reasons that might make you not want to move to Portland, Oregon. When you're giving reasons, that someone might not want to move to a place, it's going to vary from person to person. What one person finds is a positive, others find it a negative. Example, maybe you like the rain like I do, other people hate it. You might agree with a few of the reasons on this list, you might agree with all of them. You're going to find out right now. Number 10, gender neutral. This crap is big here. You can't refer to a female as a female or a man as a man in the workplace. Gender is not a thing anymore, I guess. If you dare say something like, excuse me, miss, in the workplace, you'll be in a meeting with HR. I tried to get a female worker's attention at PetSmart and said, excuse me, miss, and she twirls around and says, I don't identify as a woman. So I just said, well, I identify you as a woman. You look like a chick. Her face contorted in shock and her eyebrows went up around her hairline like I just dropped a deuce in aisle four and I was very unapologetic. I refuse to ignore evolution so you can control how I communicate. Number nine, the traffic is bad. I used to tell people that the traffic isn't that bad in Portland because I grew up in Los Angeles and it's horrendous in Los Angeles. I don't tell people that anymore. In the 10 years that I've lived in Portland's metro area, it has gotten so bad. God help you if you need to go across the bridge to Vancouver, Washington between the hours of like, I don't know, 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. It's bumper to bumper the whole way. If you do have to do this, make sure you at least have a half a tank of gas and something to eat and maybe some water. You're going to be there a while. Portland has a lot of bridges. If you've ever lived in a city with a fair amount of bridges, you know they present more than a few issues to your commute. Now, downtown Portland is its own different animal. It takes a while to get used to. Some streets are one way. I still am not sure which ones. Other streets have a train, while some have a big bus lane that's painted green that you can or can't go in. I keep hearing you can't, but I never go downtown and not see someone in a Prius or a Tesla cruising the green bus lane. Number eight, public transportation. Portland's train, the MAX, and the bus system work a little too well in a lot of ways. This has created crowds during rush hours so bad that you might have to wait for a train or two just to get on. Then you have the dicks that bring their bikes on the trains. These dudes will come on the train when it's standing room only and put their bike on these hooks that they have there for the bikes. The bike takes up the space that three people could. And then they get all pissy if you bump into their huffy dill pickle bike while the train puts on the brakes bunch of idiots. On top of all that, the buses seem to stop a little too early in some areas, leaving drunk people in their 20s having to make tough decisions. Do I add to my carbon footprint because there's no emission-free Ubers available, or do I walk the six blocks home? You know, tough decisions. Number seven, the art tax. This one isn't as big a deal as it is stupid and sort of shows the mental state of the average Portland resident. There's an art tax. It's only $35 a year, but they have to pay it. The Portland art tax is formerly known as the Arts, Education, and Access Income Tax is a $35 tax paid by the residents of Portland, Oregon to support school teachers and art-focused nonprofit organizations. Residents age 18 and older with $1,000 or more of taxable income are required to pay the tax. What happened to our schools? We used to have art class. I loved art class. I think art's important. It didn't need a special tax back then. We already had taxes that helped pay for school programs. Why is art all of a sudden not worth using normal taxes on? Nobody uses algebra after college, and I don't see that one being eliminated anytime soon without a special tax. How much does it cost to have an art class in Portland? Non-toxic, gluten-free crayons can't be that expensive. Number six, the aggressive homeless. Portland has always had homeless, like all major cities. Portland probably has more than most per capita, but all cities have them. Whether they're on the streets or living in a van down by the river, every state, every city has homeless people. And yes, they sometimes use the sidewalks as a restroom in all of those cities. Stop typing. Portland's homeless used to just be strange. Most of them had their problems that would be on full display all over Portland, and they were just keeping it weird. But they kept to themselves, other than asking for some cash every now and again. Something changed a couple years ago. They started getting aggressive when asking for that cash, or sometimes they just got aggressive they wanted to be weird in your personal space, which is always a good time. There's an area north of Burnside by the Amtrak station in Portland. Most of us avoid it at night. Hell, it's not a good idea at noon. 
Number five, snow. Portland is known for gray skies and rain, and that's just part of life in the Pacific Northwest. People are used to it and they can deal with it. We all have a good rain jacket and we do things in the rain that other cities wait till summer to do, like parades. We expect it to rain on our parades. But holy hell, this town falls apart if we get a couple snowflakes. If it snows for a couple days in a row, you'd think we had a disaster of biblical proportion. Schools shut down, people hide in their homes, strippers wear scarves. It's a nightmare. We haven't had a good snowstorm in a couple of years, but the last one we had was rough. The snow wasn't terrible, but the reaction was. Number four, gangs. If you're thinking about making the move to Portland but can't afford to live downtown because rent is terrible in all of downtown, not just the good parts, a lot of newcomers find themselves looking at places on the east side, which gets worse every block you get away from downtown. If you really can't afford rent or a mortgage in Portland, you end up in Gresham, which is a neighboring city. This area has been growing tweakers for decades. Actually, I believe Gresham supplies most of the tweakers to the Pacific Northwest. There seems to be a lot of white gangs here. Who saw that one coming. Wait, never mind. It's Oregon. Everyone saw that coming. But it's not just Gresham and East Portland. Probably the worst part is Northeast Portland. They have seen a steady increase in gang violence for about a decade now. It's slowly been growing. They say Portland's shootings will be much higher this year in 2020. So we've got some bad neighborhoods, even though it really never makes the news any place outside of Portland. Number three face tattoos. Tattoos have always been a big thing in Portland. There's a line in a song from the first episode of that TV show Portlandia that says the ink never runs dry in Portland. It's very fitting for this city. Now I have my fair share of ink. I'm not bashing tattoos, just where people are getting them. There has been this growing trend of suburban kids getting face and neck tattoos around Portland. Something that's always been reserved for the incarcerated types, let's say. Besides the blow of face tattoo is going to give your possible lifetime income, it's a trend. It's a permanent trend for the person getting the face or neck tattoo that they can't hide in a job interview when they're 35. Now I understand it shouldn't matter to a possible employer that you have a face or neck tattoo. I also wish unicorns were real. You might be able to get it lasered off when you're 40, but it's still gonna leave a mark. Like I said, it's a trend. Like the armband I got in the 1990s. It was cool at the time, but it turned lame about the time Y2K was a flop. And how many 45 year old girls are still digging the tramp stamp they got in 1993? So if you move to Portland, be prepared for the occasional face and neck tattoo on a blonde girl whose parents normally call her Muffin. Number two, the nuclear college kids. Reed College in Portland has a nuclear reactor. I'm not kidding. You heard me right. They have a nuclear reactor. You have a bunch of college kids that are able to buy weed legally with a nuclear reactor. The Reed College reactor is a Triga Mark I reactor at the bottom of a 25-foot deep tank. The reactor is surrounded by graphite rings which minimize the neutron leakage by reflecting neutrons back into the core. You know what? That means nothing to me. All I know is you have a bunch of kids that have access to drugs, alcohol, and a nuclear reactor. What could go wrong? I'm sure it'll be fine. And number one, offended for attention. Now, I understand the world sucks sometimes. Life is a rough sport. There's injustice, racism, sexism, homophobia, transphobia, pretzel pop-tarts, age discrimination, fat shaming, slut shaming, and the list goes on. There are a million things that we could do without, and we really should try and get these things out of our lives when they really happen. There's this thing I noticed in Portland a few years back, and I'm sure is moved on to other places too. It's where people search for something to be offended by so they could post it on social media or tell people about it. Being offended is like how people get attention and gain some sort of online street cred just by being offended. One of my favorite things is called micro-racism. Now there's a whole bunch, but this one kind of cracks me up. Let me explain. If you're talking to someone at work about things you did when, let's say, you were a kid, and you say something like, well, where did you grow up? And they happen to be, let's say, Asian or Hispanic. That's micro-racism. You can't ask them where they came from. And you've just wounded them so deeply that they have to go post it on Facebook or send out a tweet. It's really not about you asking where they're from. They probably would be more than happy to share that with you. But what makes them even more happy is the attention they get for being offended, for having a cause. They feel like they're an intellectual, they feel like people are on their side, and they like people telling them it's going to be okay. Welcome to Portland. Being offended is not a skill. All right, that's my video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. If you like what I do here, give the video a big thumbs up. If you really like what I do here, please feel free to subscribe, share my stuff on your social media. Tell people how I offended you. Everybody have a great day. Be nice to each other.